for Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about where to start with physical media. I've done a lot of videos about physical media, about my collection, about how I spend and how I collect. But I haven't talked a bit, I haven't talked really about how to start collecting. Where do you get in with physical media? Where do you actually start with all of this? Well, first things first, you need to decide where you want to collect. What do you want to collect? What format do you like? I mean, I've talked many times about DVD is certainly not an old format. It definitely seems old because by modern standards it's outdated. But it can still pack a punch if you know what you're getting into. And that's one thing I would want to start on. Know what you want to target. For me, I collect everything, but my preference you can see behind me is Blu-ray. The Blu-ray collection is the backdrop for most of my videos. And it's split into two parts. I've got 4K Blu-rays, and then down the bottom I've got standard Blu-rays. I've also got some off to the side. So I know what I'm targeting, I know what I want, but I also have DVDs, I have VHS, I have other formats, Laserdisc. So you can collect all, you can collect some, but I have a preference and I choose to target mainly Blu-ray. 4K is nice if there's an option, but also I'm not necessarily ruling out DVD. And you also need to decide whether you want to buy brand new or whether you want to buy pre-owned. Now obviously there are two differences there. Buying brand new means you're getting the disc directly from manufacturers, directly from distribution. You're getting it brand new. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any defects on the disc. Whereas secondhand, there can be like scratches, there can be sometimes things that impact the playback. Of course, if you're checking that, if you can go and buy it in person or something, you can be checking that before you buy. And that's one thing. You can also get in at a much cheaper price. As I mentioned, DVD. DVDs you can pick up at op shops for like a dollar, you know? Not even. So, you know, you can really, you can really comprehend, okay, if I go older, pre-owned, I can essentially buy more for that dollar than if I was buying brand new. That being said, with a newer movie or even something that was a bit more, a bit more keen to damage, like a children's movie or something where children might be handling the disc, it might be just better to pay $5 or something and get it brand new. Like, and when I say brand new, I'm talking about new old movies so like titanic not titanic but you know like shrek or like so on so the start will be most expensive don't get me wrong when i started doing this iteration of my collection because i've had many different versions of my collection through the years i call this a second iteration because the first iteration i tore down when i went digital and i threw out all the cases kept all the discs put them in binders and then a couple of years after the fact realized that digital wasn't all it was made up to be so I ended up going back to physical media. And when I started this collection, the most expensive year for me was 2020 because the world had shut down. It was a lot harder to get things. And 2021 as well, because I was still building this iteration of the collection. But it was the most expensive year because the startup will always be most expensive. It will always be the most expensive when you're picking up your favorites. Like you're picking up your Titanics, you're picking up your Jurassic Parks, Jaws, all of your favorites, Indiana Jones. It'll be the most expensive because you're tracking down your favorites. And yes, you might say, okay, but if I go pre-owned, I can still get them for like a dollar. And that's the case. Yeah, it would be a dollar. But when you get to this level of the collection, you can pick and choose. Whereas starting out, you'll be more keen to say, hey, I want my favorites first. So if you see your favorites, you're going to pick up your favorites there at that price. One dollar, 50 cents, whatever it may be. You might choose brand new for some of your favorites because you may want the 4K transfer. Now, obviously, you'll also need a player, which players are a bit of a tedious thing. Most people starting out, I would say, just use your game console. And I know there are collectors who say, do not put it on the game consoles. Do not put it in the PS3. Do not put it in the Xbox Series X. Do not put it in whatever. Well, I argue against that. If you've got a player and you're getting into collecting, not a long-time collector who needs, who wants the best of the best, if you're just starting out, there's no reason why you can't use the PlayStation. There's no reason why you can't use what you already have. As long as you can play Blu-rays, you can use what you already have. Now, if you don't have something like that, I would recommend the game systems, like older generation game systems. The PS4 is still available in some stores. Get an old stock PS4 for like 100 or something. And it's not the same price as the PS5, but it will do the job. It will play your Blu-rays. Now, if you want to play 4Ks, I would recommend going towards maybe an older Xbox One X or something, or One S. Something that can play 4K discs. There are options out there. You can probably get them on the second-hand market for 100 as well. But I would say look at the cheapest method, which the cheapest method is the game systems. Now, if you want to be a hardcore collector and go the hard route and say, yep, I want the best of the best, 
I use the Panasonic UB820. I have an OLED LG C9, and that is my setup. I use what was the best player of 2019, or 2020, and the best TV of 2019. So when I bought them, they were the best in the world, and they are still really good. A good setup worked together. So when you start out, it will be more expensive, as I said, and that's part of the cost. You will be getting your players, you'll be figuring out what you want to watch on. If it's a CRT, you'll be picking up your CRT to watch older stuff. That's the most expensive. The startup is always the most expensive. And you need to keep that in mind because that will work into your budget. You also need to ask if, um, where possible, if you're buying online, this is not always possible, but checking the disc before you buy. It is very important with used things, especially when you don't really know the condition. eBay might say it's brand new, but it's not always brand new. So Marketplace is always good because you can prefer meeting in person and checking the disc. Also stores, if you can get it at a secondhand store like a, um, a GameStop or EB Games in Australia or, you know, if that's games or even with physical media, you can go to like CEX or the Salvos, you know, you can check those before you buy and just know what the disc look like. Hold it up, always hold it under a light so that way if you're buying a disc, it'll, it'll show a few more scratches or whatever. It'll show what the hidden flaws might be with the disc. So I always hold it under like a light and just hold it up and then tilt the disc around, just make sure like, okay, I can see all angles of the disc, make sure there's nothing hidden down in there. And then I make my purchase if I want. Um, and then if brand new, um, one thing you wanna be aware of is if you get the, if you get the game or the, um, the Blu-ray or DVD or whatever, if it's brand new, always try to steer clear of if it's loose in, the case when you're going to buy it. I mean, some people might say it's a really hard one to get, so I may pick it up. And there are situations where I've picked up ones that have been listed in the case. But keep in mind that if these things are coming around the world, like if you're getting it from the UK or if you're getting it from the US in Australia, or if you're importing in the US from like things like Umbrella, then you are more susceptible to that getting damaged in shipping. So be aware that if you're getting it brand new, before you open it, I would always just give it a nice, a little tilt and just see if anything's loose in there. If it is loose, I would probably steer clear of opening it and just asking for a replacement copy or something or just bringing it up. Obviously you need to open it and just double check. Obviously they will guide you, but I would say bring it up with manufacturing first and just say, hey, this has come loose in shipping. Um, should I open it? Should I send it back and get another copy sent? Or it's always good to check that. I would always say, hey, if, um, if you do open it and it's got a big scratch on it, I prefer opening it, but Always be aware that if it comes loose in shipping, it can be damaged when you open it. Uh, once you have bought your media, you have to figure out arranging. So obviously you see the collection behind me. It does. It may look like a big mess, but all of this has a way I arrange. So the way I do it is I separate into formats. So I've got 4K at the top, as I said, I've got Blu-ray down the bottom. I've got some HD DVD over the side. I've got DVDs over there wrestling over there. So it's like everything has a place. And then I categorize within those formats. So you can see up the top here, I've got some drama. I've got biopics or when I say biopics, I don't necessarily always mean biopics. I tend to have it as based or inspired by a true story. So at least it's got some resemblance of something that happened in real life. So that's what my interpretation of biopics is. Then I have my comedy. Over here I have sci-fi, action, they're all 4K. I've had Pixar, Disney in 4K. Then further down I've got my drama in just standard Blu-ray. So I've got that all organized. Now obviously I haven't organized my DVD collection. That's something I've been putting off for the longest time. Obviously you have to figure out how you want to arrange. I've had my wrestling DVDs behind the door arranged in terms of pay-per-view. So in terms of when the pay-per-view aired. So if it was aired in 22, 2024, i would have that 2024. Now, obviously, they don't manufacture DVDs in 2024 for WWE. But let's say um, 2002, let's say. If I wanted to organize 2002, I would have it in order. I would have them put in order of the airing. So if Bad Blood, then SummerSlam, then whatever, I'd have them all in order. And that's one thing you have to be aware of. Um, you can kind of arrange it anyhow you want. Because at the end of the day, it's your preference. It's like you don't have to organize in categories. You don't have to even separate 4K from Blu-ray. I've seen some collectors who have, okay, I have my 4K copies and then I have right next to them. So it's all in alphabetical order and all in one place. 
you could have it all in one place. You don't have to separate Blu-ray from 4K. You don't have to separate DVD from everything. Like, you can choose to have it all together and organize however you want. It's all user preference. I just prefer having different categories because if I know, hey, I want to watch 4K of Titanic, I can say, oh yeah, that's in biopics because it is a true ship. It's not a true story. Obviously, Jack and Rose isn't a true story, <laughs> but the ship is real. The, the Titanic is real. And a lot of the characters in that movie are based on real life characters. Molly Brown, you know, so on, you know, J. Jacob Astor, like all of those people are based on true real life people. So I put Titanic in the biopic section, even though, because as I said, it's inspired by a true story. It's not necessarily a true story, Jack and Rose, but it is inspired by a true story. And Cameron took a lot of things from historical art, historical um, accounts to make Titanic and do the backstories of Titanic rather than the main story of Titanic is J Romeo and Juliet. Um, don't shape out on a player. So obviously this is something I have, um, I just mentioned here, get a PlayStation or something. I'll recommend always don't cheap out on it. So people will say, oh, just go go to the go to the nearest big W or Kmart or whatever. Get the cheapest one you can find. No worries. I would say it's the same as vinyl. Some people will say, oh, yeah, just go get the cheapest. But as vinyl collectors will tell you, and as I will tell you, you want to essentially not cheap out because it can damage a disc. Keep in mind, there are corners being cut to give you that cheap price if it's a shop like BW or something. Now, if you don't care and you're just watching DVDs on it and you don't mind, a $29 DVD player is not going to be too bad from Big W, don't get me wrong. There are reasons why you'd pick that up. And, I mean, if you're starting out and you don't mind, just be aware that if you hear rattling in the player or anything, um, there are reasons why cheap players are not the best. And that's why I meant, that's why I mentioned the game systems, because the game systems ship with at least some level of quality control, even though, you know, we're getting to that day where disk drives are no longer being shipped in the consoles to an extent. Um, and then always store your meter when it's not in use. Don't leave it in the player. Don't put it in some weird, don't put it in some weird thing like, okay, I'll just put it on top of the TV and just sit it there for a bit or sit it, sit it on the desk. Like it's not going to get damaged because it's face down or whatever. Put it back in the case when you're not using it. You might think, oh, leaving it in the player won't damage it. Yeah, if you're, look, if you're watching a DVD or Blu-ray, I probably won't damage the disc, but just be aware that occasionally when you power on something, like turn on the PowerPoint or whatever, it can spin the disc, it can start up when you're not expecting it, it can do little things, and that could lead to damage of the disc long term. The overall, the end of the day, you want to preserve your media as long as you possible if you're going to go this route. And you want to make sure that with your media, you are getting the best experience. And you obviously you don't want that you don't want that disc to be out of the gate scratched, you know, you don't want to store it in the wrong way and then you pick it up off the thing and it's all scratched because you've stored it face down or something. Even face up, if you store it face up with the shiny side that plays, um, that can catch dust and it'll become a lot, it could be damaged with dust. So try to put it back in the case when you're not using it. It's a two second thing that will protect your investment. Trust me on that one, it will protect you. And with DVDs, and I have to say this for some Blu-rays as well, because I've seen some people who get into the format and say, oh, DVD looks like rubbish. Oh, it's, I've got my new 4K TV. I've turned up sharpening all the way and it looks like garbage. What did you think was going to happen? I mean, if you bought a DVD that's limit, you have to look at the formats as what they are. DVD is standard definition. And if you're trying to put it on a 4K TV in sh sharpening it all the way up, sharpening doesn't mean it's going to necessarily make it look like a 4K Blu-ray, you know? It's not going to look like that. Now, there are some situations where sharpening does help. A little bit of sharpening will help a DVD look the best it can look. But it's essentially what sharpening is, is it's guessing information that's not there based on the information around it. So if, if it's a photo of Sam Neill's face from Jurassic Park, and it's a standard definition picture from Jurassic Park, it'll try to guess, oh, okay, I don't know what's behind him, but that kind of looks like a T-Rex, but it'll sharpen it because it doesn't know what it's seeing. It doesn't know what it's looking at. And it's getting better. I mean, AI is starting to come into some of these players and starting to come into some of these systems. But sharpening a DVD to 4K resolution or sharpening it as high as it can go will not make it 4K Blu-ray. Watch it for what it is. It is a DVD. And yes, I always turn sharpening off when I watch DVDs because if I'm watching a DVD, 
I want it to look like DVD, and I know what I'm getting. If I wanted to watch Blu-ray, I try to sh turn sharpening off on that as well. If I'm watching a 4K, I don't obviously need sharpening because my TV is a 4K TV. But understanding what you're looking at, what you're collecting, is a big part of collecting. If I've watched a VHS, for example, I would have the VHS, I have it connected currently to my CRT te television, I haven't watched the VHS in about a year though, but if I wanted to watch a VHS connected up to my 4K, I'm turning sharpening all the way off. Like, I want it to just read what's on the tape and play it as it's coming off the tape rather than trying to guess information, rather than trying to upscale, rather than trying to anything. Now, obviously, there are some upscaling options that are necessities. Obviously, if you're putting a 720p picture on a 4K screen without any upscaling happening, it'll just be a little box in the middle of the TV with black all around it. So upscaling is a necessity, but sharpening is not a necessity. You turn sharpening off and try not to upscale where possible. Like if it's possible, try not to, um, but some are necessities. And then, you know, collecting, that's all my dot points for that one, but collecting can be such a great experience. Just enjoy it. Like that's one thing that we don't think about as collectors. And as we all get on YouTube and start talking about, look at my collection, look at how great it is. Here's what I love about this. Here's why digital's bad. You know, <laughs> I've done a few of those videos too. But as we get on here, we stop and we really get into that mindset of, hold on, what is collecting about? Collecting is about you having the ability to switch offline and no matter what happens, whether it's a hurricane or whatever, I know there's a hurricane that's went through North Carolina and some parts of America. I know that's a pretty big, um, pretty big thing at the moment. And anyone who has been affected by that, um, just know my thoughts are with you. Um, but stuff like that can knock a, an internet grid offline, you know, it can knock down power grids, you know. And if um, you have the ability to still have that, that entertainment available to you like this, um, you know, the power will be always the first thing to be restored. Like without power, a lot of things fail. So a lot of companies, a lot of governments look to restore power first. The power grid is number one, obviously plumbing grids, all that stuff, water as well. You know, all of that does get restored as well. And they're the first things. Internet is not a necessity in a lot of situations. Yes, with things like Starlink, it is making it more accessible when things happen like that. But you do have the ability to switch off. Like, you know, I was watching last night. I was watching, let me see if I can get it off here on the shelf. I had never watched Punisher Warzone, which might seem like a bit of an odd one to me buying this and then never watching it. But I watched this for the first time last night. And Ray Stevenson is amazing as the Punisher. He passed away a bit too soon. Like, I would have liked to have seen a... Obviously, look, he... They didn't make a sequel to this because it got universally panned, but... I think he only passed away a year or two ago, and Ray Stevenson was a really good, um, he was a really good Punisher who we didn't really see his full potential, like, I think we could have seen a bit more from this type of Punisher. But don't get me wrong, I love the Thomas Jane Punisher any, as well, like, there are different versions of that. That's the thing, like, I also, without telling you on this video, no one would have known that I watched the Punisher, like, that is a really cool thing. There's no algorithm tracking me, there is no ads being catered to me based on me watching that. There is nothing to say, hey, Jamie watched The Punisher, so let's suggest Punisher 2004. Let's, su let's suggest the Punisher TV series. Let's try to put an ad for Disney Plus. You know, there is none of that happening because my physical media collection is mine and is something that is offline, something that is just me and I can experience it offline. But yeah, that is just the point of this video, guys. When you get started collecting, It'll be the most expensive because that's when you're starting. You want to get all your favorites, obviously, first. They'll be the first things you collect. Your TV shows, your favorite movies. They'll be the first thing that you pick up. They'll be the most expensive. And then after that, you can pick and choose. You can say, hey, do I, I like Triple X. Uh, you know, Triple X is all right. Vin Diesel. I've got the other two down the bottom, like the Ice Cube one where he steals the tank and that. <laughs> but I didn't really need part three. But you can analyze that at the shop and go like, huh, it's, it's a new Triple X movie. It would be a compliment to the other two in my collection, but do I really need it? So I would have waited for that to go on sale, I reckon. I would have picked that up on sale. So, you know, you can pick and choose the experience, and you can pick and choose how expensive you want it to be. You could get, you could fill a whole DVD collection for maybe a couple of hundred. DVD's a bit more 
a bit cheaper, but Blu-ray is a bit more expensive and 4K is way more expensive. So you need to pick and choose. Obviously, if you're getting into VHS, that's going up in value now because VHS has become collectible. And then also Laserdisc is kind of in that weird point where people don't really know what it is. So Laserdisc may return at some point. Um, I don't think people are going to gravitate towards back, it, back towards it. Other than the covers, the covers for Laserdisc were freaking amazing. But yeah, I don't see Laserdisc making a return. <laughs> but you know, um, when you're buying, just enjoy it. Like if you're starting your collection, enjoy it. Like if you're picking up the mask or Titanic or, you know, whatever, the craft, click, whatever. And I'm looking off at the titles in the corner here. <laughs> if you're picking up those, just enjoy it. And you never get those experiences back. Like I've went into shops back in the past where I've bought out almost the entire shop. <laughs> You know, these are the experiences of a physical media collector. Like, I have, there was one shop I went into where a CEX store in, I believe, Kotara, which is in New South Wales. And this would have been like August 2020 or something like that. It would have been 2020 or maybe even 2021. I know it was around August though. I don't remember what year. But I went into the store and I was like, okay, I'm going to go in here and see what they have. I was there to buy Star Trek and I was there because, um, yeah, it's down here. Let me just grab this out of the thing real quick because I'm going to tell you this story and I'll end on this story. So I was looking for this box set in particular, all the Star Trek original series. Now, I had had one and two before in my original collection, but I threw away the covers. So I wanted to recollect it with the covers. And I was like, well, if I'm going to do that, I might as well get the box set with number three in it as well. Now, so I picked this up and I went to Kotara to buy this. I bought this at Kotara in New South Wales, CEX. And when I was there, I was like, you know what? I'm here. They have a good Blu-ray collection, a blu good Blu-ray section, and I could probably get a lot for pretty cheap for under 500. So I spent about 500. I have the single biggest purchase in terms of Blu-rays at CEX Kotara. I bought probably 100 of them for about 500. And they were like, this is the biggest purchase I've ever seen. The docket, the receipt was like this long. It was like, it was huge. It was a huge receipt. And I was, that's a little fun story that I'm like, yeah, that was me when I was collecting. I was like, yeah, for me, I'll, it was worth it. But that's when I was starting out my collection. That's when I was really getting on a roll saying, okay, I need more content. I want to pick up all my favorites. Let's just do a big transaction. I've got the money there. I've saved. So let's do it. And obviously that is something that not everyone will do. But, you know, it's, it's up to you to choose how you want to collect. And I'll end on that one. Your collection is a reflection of yourself. This is a reflection of myself. But you have to decide what's important to you, what movies you want, how much you're willing to spend on those. From there, you can pick and choose. You can pick and choose how much you spend. You can pick and choose how you store them. But I would say these tips that I've just suggested in this video will help you get there. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and I will get back to you in the next one. Peace.